Okay, so I see we almost have everybody here. So hello, everyone, uh, boys and girls. <laughs> uh, welcome to, to our weekly insider. As usual, uh, super excited and pumped to be here. Uh, sharing with you some great, great updates. Uh, please remember uh, that this uh, recording of our call will be available on our Both Horizon podcast and our YouTube channel. For those of you who would like to review these later or share it with some friends, uh, you can go there to our YouTube channel and the Horizon podcast to check that out uh, later. So without further ado, let's just start our weekly insider with the great updates from the engineering department. Luca, if you would like to go ahead. Hello, everybody. Uh, Luca from uh, Milan office. Today we have uh, an update uh, uh, about um, Zeppelin. So Alberto Garofalo is uh, going to provide uh, more info about that. And I can see that uh, Andre Sobol is also online uh, following the Weekly Insider. He's, he has been the primary resource that uh, was dedicated to, to the uh, Zeppelin issue investigation. And uh, moreover, of course, we will uh, speak uh, and provide an update about uh, the progress that was done on the sidechain project side. Uh, so without no further ado, I'll pass the word to uh, Alberto. And of course, if at the end of the, the call there will be uh, any question, we will be happy to answer. Please, Alberto, if you would like to go on. Thank you, Luca. Okay, uh, regarding the sapling uh, denial of service issue. Okay, with Andre, we proceeded uh, with the analysis and identified a possible strategy to solve it under certain assumptions. So, uh, in the process, we calculated a, a sort of computational score for each transaction that is related to the type and number of inputs and outputs and verified that with uh, the, this current block size, even if um, the block is full of shielded transactions, uh, there are no problems in terms of propagation times. So, and this was uh, a first verification that, uh, I mean, for safety reason was, was needed. Uh, okay, going back regarding to the mempool, uh, for sure, uh, we are going to limit it in terms of size, uh, requiring higher fees uh, when uh, the pool is going to be full. But about the verification of cost, uh, uh, sorry, the cost of global verification time, uh, we are still uh, evaluating if introducing such limit uh, or if adopting a different strategy. So uh, what do we mean here? Well, one option can be to have uh, a sort of limit in terms of computational power, global computational power that uh, is needed to verify all the transactions that are uh, contained in my pool. But another strategy that we are taking in consideration is uh, to modify the process of, um, let me say, evaluating incoming transaction, validating incoming transaction from neighbor nodes uh, to be added to the mempool. Uh, so uh, preventing the node to be stuck verifying a big queue of malicious transaction. And we are thinking to do it, doing this by uh, scheduling the processing of this queue in a different way. In such a way, we will guarantee that uh, incoming blocks uh, are going to be processed and relayed even in uh, such situations. So uh, even if we have a big queue of uh, malicious transactions that will require a lot of time to be processed, we will have a way for, uh, in any case, processing incoming blocks and, and, relaying, and relaying them. And this will prevent situation, let me say, prevent a malicious actor of creating forks uh, by, uh, let me say, mm, um, making a node busy evaluating transactions. Okay, um, regarding SDK development, uh, one of the main pull requests has uh, been um, reviewed and uh, this pull request uh, was a huge pull request and uh, included, uh, for example, node history implementation, uh, a simple uh, consensus uh, implementation and uh, 
some parts of the API, uh, a new object serialization uh, uh, that was needed because also we updated the, uh, the scorex dependency, uh, some node interface definition, uh, and um, the basic application class and settings implementation. So a very big uh, pull request uh, that, uh, uh, let me say, contain a lot of components that are going to be included in the, uh, with Alpha. And the next step is a code review of a main chain cross-chain transfer protocol. So some part of the main chain cross-chain cross transfer protocol. Uh, and then uh, um, WebSocket communication between side chain and main chain node. Let me say, uh, channel for uh, side chain node to, re to uh, retrieve uh, main chain blocks and if needed, I mean, if they are present, and uh, parse them and include them in, in side chain blocks. So like main chain block reference. And this is needed, for example, for uh, including in sidechain block forward transfers. Um, for example, if a user wants to send some coins from, from main chain to sidechain, these are going to be included in a main chain block. These are going to, this main chain block is going to be referenced in a sidechain block or better, the, these sidechain related information are going to be uh, referenced in the sidechain block, but this needs that the sidechain node connected to a main chain node uh, will get this information and parse them and include them. And uh, almost everything from my side. Thank you. Good. This was it from our side. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca. So next one would be Chronic with the infrastructure and nodes uh, updates. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, so our uh, Testing of the next server build for secure and super node tracking uh, has reached a point on testnet where we're pretty confident that uh, we can give it a try on mainnet. Um, and the current plan is to deploy uh, the current uh, release on one server on mainnet um, early in the morning EU time tomorrow, uh, late in the evening US time today. So uh, Supernode EU2 server will be updated. And the reason why we're only doing uh, one server for now is uh, we've tested it as good as we can on testnet, but in production we have such a vast number of different configurations of nodes that uh, we cannot test everything. So we are going to deploy one server, let it run for a while to make sure there are no regressions uh, and uh, after a couple of days, we will actually deploy a secure node server on mainnet as well. Let it run for a while. And uh, all servers will be updated on the weekend of the 21st and 22nd. So this is in uh, one and a half weeks. Um, we will send out communications uh, before we restart the single server later today on, on Discord and uh, for the global update of all servers, there will be communications via social media and a blog post as well. Um, otherwise, for infrastructure, we've um, identified steps needed in preparation for the sidechain alpha uh, and uh, Infra will start work on that next week, uh, deploying a couple of servers. And that's pretty much it from infrastructure from this week. Thank you, Kranix. So next one would be Gustavo on the UX side. Hi, everyone. So to start, we have uh, Spencer giving the help desk update. Please, Spencer. Hi, uh, good day, everyone. Um, the metrics on the help desk since the last meeting. Um, we currently have 17 items open, four of which are waiting for support. We have eight items that are waiting for the customer to respond. We also have five items that are in a customer unresponsive status. They'll be closed at the discretion of the service agent handling that ticket. We also have a number of items that we keep in pending for a number of reasons, whether it's awaiting a software fix or they're left for informational purposes of the team, or perhaps they were submitted as a bug bounty item, even though the bug bounty reward scheme has been closed. 
Our customer satisfaction rating over the last seven days has been a 4.7 out of a possible 5.0 with currently three user reviews during that period of time. And that's the story from the service desk. Okay, thanks, Spencer. On the web development side, we are finishing the update on the faucet and it will go live next week. I put a little sneak peek on the, our test channel. We are also working on the HD website. And uh, for uh, Sphere, I'm currently working on some scripts for stress testing Sphere. And uh, we also have our main developer here. Nathan, can you give us the Sphere update? Hi, everyone. Um, so the, the UTXO handling upgrades are about to undergo a period of heavy testing. Um, so like Gus said, we had to set up a bunch of scripts to generate a, a really silly number of UTXOs on our testing addresses. Um, so this is really going to help us stress te test and uh, benchmark Sphere's data handling ability. Um, once this is done, our next focus is going to be spending time on addressing various performance upgrades and bug fixes. Uh, Sphere is in a great place right now, but there's still some things to iron out, especially for people with impressive numbers of uh, node addresses. Um, and that's all from me. Thanks, Nathan. And it's everything on our side. Thank you, Gustavo. Next one would be Rowan on the VD side. Hello, everyone. So I am just fresh out of the BD team meeting, so I've got a pretty decent update from uh, the team here. So for the next kind of couple of weeks, uh, Vano is, in fact, basically the next month, Vano has a, a very busy few weeks ahead of himself, speaking uh, across Georgia and Ukraine in a variety of different events. Pretty much all these are going to be films, which will give us uh, a good number of footage. So we're looking forward to seeing the outputs from those. Uh, Vano is also working on a variety of local exchange integrations, trying to lay foundation there and get a pipeline of uh, good news, essentially. We then have Levis working on a plan for Blockchain Week, which is coming up in LA. We're not intending to be sponsoring this time. We're simply attending and networking, try and be lean and scrappy. And we're also looking at a conference in Venezuela, which is perfect timing because we just had the XPay point of sale and Panda BTM integrations go live across Colombia and Venezuela. Uh, these are the ones that are live across the pretty fancy burger chain and soon to be a large network of pharmacies. So we really need to be out there pushing and getting people to actually use these new integrations. We then have uh, Manon working on a number of uh, exchange integrations in her area as well as globally. And on Tuesday, she's going to be in a meetup in Strasbourg doing a talk on sidechains. It should be a lot of fun. And then we have the uh, LATAM team working on uh, hosting a conference at Tech de Monterey. So that's going to be with a, a group of engineering students. And that's happening actually later on today. I'm sure they'll probably jump in and, and mention something about that just shortly. And then from my side, uh, I'm working on a variety of different integrations I can't go into any real detail on, one of which I am actually very, very excited about. So looking forward to sharing details of that. Uh, I'm also working on finalizing an um, agreement and getting the scope running for our upcoming security audit that we're going to be exercising uh, in a kind of phased approach. So phase one of the security audit will be looking at our uh, code base, where it differs from Zcash upstream. So looking at things like our, our replay protection, uh, the fork manager, TLS integration, the 51% protection code we put into place to prevent further attacks, or at least dramatically reduce the chances of further attacks. Also looking at the transaction confirmation finality methods, changes to Coinbase transactions, how we've implemented Sprout, things like that. And then phase two, we're moving into kind of more forward looking. So once we have Sapling fixed and integrated, we'll be looking to expand the scope of the audit to cover that new section of code, as well as obviously the alpha release SDK code. And then finally, phase three, we're moving more into the kind of product side. So it'll be looking at Sphere by Horizon. It'll be looking at eventually the beta phase of um, our sidechain SDK. Uh, and that's kind of everything on that side. I've also got a meetup here in Panama City, Panama that I'll be attending in a few hours. It's a Binance meetup co-hosted by a local ATM uh, company. So we'll be meeting up with those guys. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get a chance to get a speaking spot this time, but hopefully we'll get one for the next time around, but at least they're networking and trying to make some connections. 
that's pretty much it from me at the moment. If anyone else from BD wants to jump in and expand on any of these points, please feel free to do so. Hello, everyone. So to expand uh, on some things, we have an update for our uh, Horizon meetup in Kiev, Ukraine. We have uh, a new host there, uh, Sipacraft uh, Pub, because uh, the old host, Kmingarium, uh, had been, has been damaged uh, by some bad people. And Andrei, the owner of the Kmingarium, has been an amazing in uh, finding a new host for us for free. So you can uh, see the updated uh, event uh, on the links here. And last week we also had OKX Talks 2019 in Tbilisi, uh, and uh, where I was uh, talking about uh, Horizon, what we do, and our upcoming side chains platform. You can see the picture pictures of um, event at the link below. And I have also um, managed to add backlinks at local um, technical website, overclockers.g, for our academy and our website. And I'm also in talks with several other uh, websites uh, for adding these links. And um, I think it will be uh, continue, continued on an ongoing basis, this uh, adding, add, adding uh, backlinks. That's all from me. Thank you, Vano and Rowan. So, yeah, just to complement on the uh, what Rowan, Rowan said, um, we're having today a, a small conference uh, for uh, all the engineering students at Tec de Monterrey. We were invited there to uh, bring students aware, awareness of what blockchain is about. And we're also pulling efforts on um, working with this university to provide a PhD program um, at the beginning of next year which will be super amazing to, to be able to provide materials and lectures um, regarding blockchain industry. And um, so, yeah, it's going to be very, very exciting. So next one would be uh, Jonas on the HDA uh, update. Hey, everyone. Uh, Jonas here speaking from Innsbruck, Austria, as usual. Um, over the last couple of days, we've been working on the Zen improvement proposal um, process. I've uh, been working with uh, Peace Today and Rob. Um, also talked to uh, Dean about licensing um, questions, which kind of license we want to have um, or we want to see for um, the improvement proposals and the code that accompanies them. Um, so I think we will um, finish the um, license question or we've we will find an answer to the license question rather sooner than later. Um, I still stand by the promise that there will be a public draft by the end of the month. I was just going to remind you about that, Jonas. Very ambitious. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> yeah, I think for, for a draft, I'm not, I'm not saying it's finalized, but at least a draft is uh, reasonable, I think. Other than that, I've been uh, working on Academy Expert content, which is, um, it's a lot. It does take some time. Um, writing is not always easy. You can't always force it. Sometimes um, it's not as fast as you would like, but getting there. Um, and that is it from my side. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jonas. The next one would be uh, Jonathan with the marketing updates. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. So on my end, the newsletter is going out tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. It's actually ready, but we don't like to send it in the evening because we get much lower click-through rates. So it'll go out tomorrow morning. Um, I have another call scheduled with Angie tomorrow to discuss how we can best uh, work with Carlos, um, our partners in Guatemala, and let the community know about our efforts to help uh, the Guatemalan elections. Um, as Gustavo mentioned, uh, th there have been uh, big progress on the faucet. We're going to meet on Wednesday with Gustavo, the marketing team, uh, to talk about messaging and how we want to convey the changes. Because there are a lot of new changes to the faucet, and they're really cool and they're really exciting, but we have to convey it in a way that, uh, that people can understand and uh you know you know just some of the changes are bonuses for referrals bonuses for coming in every day bonuses for coming in five days in a row so there's a whole bunch of new things that that we have to we have to talk through and think about um 
so we also posted the live stream on September 10th. So if you wanted to see a summary or send a summer, summary to someone, that blog is now out. Uh, we're working with Waxman to create some new bios for uh, our leadership team. So you might get an email from me asking um, to fill in some gaps in the bios. Basically, what we've done is we've gone through some bios of other CEOs that were really well regarded. And we'll try to craft um, your guys' bios uh, in the same kind of framework as the bios that were presented for other CEOs. So, for example, some of our bios don't include passion projects. Uh, so I might be sending you an email asking you what you're passionate about, aside from blockchain, if there is anything. Um, and now Erica will talk a little bit about our Instagram. Thank you. Hey, guys. So Instagram currently is still stuck around 122 followers. Um, so the most I can say is just get out there, follow our Instagram, share it with everybody, really spread it around. Um, giveaway is currently at 187 entries. So um, feel free to keep tagging your friends in comments. Um, each comment is an entry. So really builds up your possibility to enter. Um, other than that, I don't really have much updates, but um, thanks for listening, I guess. <laughs> Erica, wasn't there someone from the community that you wanted to thank? Oh, yes. Thank you for reminding me. So I'm not sure if he's currently on the channel. It doesn't look like it, but we just want to say thank you to the Desert Links for doing that really great interview with Rob. I'm not sure if you guys have had a chance to watch it, but I will link it in our internal chat. That way you guys can listen in and watch it. It was pretty great. And don't bother thanking Rob while you're at it. Yeah. Sorry, Rob, but you're an alien and we can't thank you for that. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Erica. Okay, thank you, guys uh, and girls. <laughs> so next one will be Dean on the legal side. Hey, everybody. Um, yeah, I enjoyed my conversation with Jonas. And uh, actually, I think that was the first time we met, uh, I'll say, in person, although it was a video call. So that was a pleasure. Um, and looking forward to working on some of the uh, licensing language that will go into our Zen Improvement Protocol. Um, otherwise, also working on filing some trademark uh, follow-ups for Sphere by Horizon. So, uh, Lucy, Jonathan, I might be reaching out to you guys today just to confirm um, sites. And that's it for me on the legal side. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Dean. Next one is Rosario with the product and engineering side. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I, uh, as Roan mentioned, we've kicked off the code audit and Piers provided all the details to the audit agencies. So uh, they are good to start that effort and really excited to get that going. Uh, we've also defined the process to our, make our alpha public, as uh, uh, Chronic mentioned. And that's exciting because uh, everyone will be able to look at our uh, and play with our our alpha release uh, without uh, uh, in a separate environment than our current testnet. So that's going to be really good. So looking forward to uh, community input and collaboration on that, and uh, excited to see what what comes out of that uh, for our community. I will be in Milan uh, for some weeks working uh, with a team out there um, and planning our, our sidechain beta uh, release that is going to be uh, following, of course, alpha. So uh, looking forward to doing that. Uh, also, Luca, Angie, and Ruben are supporting the quarterly review and different uh, uh, departments and uh, different groups will be getting uh, some tags from from uh, Luca, Angie, and Ruben uh, to start populating these. And, and this is going to be the first transition uh, from our monthly to our uh, quarterly. So we'll be using a similar or the same format that we do for our internal uh, quarterly slides. Uh, and uh, what I've asked uh, 
Angie to relate to BD, uh, Rowan, uh, and marketing is that uh, uh, probably the format we use for for engineering is not not appropriate. So you guys can come up with your your own form format. Uh, the date for that is going to be pending so we'll need to work with rob because rob you're going to be uh, away so we'll need to find an uh, either an alternative uh, or a different date that is it for now thank you thank you rosario uh rolf would you like to add anything yeah i'm looking forward to uh traveling to visit some uh team members uh october 2nd i'm going to be in amsterdam and uh i'm planning on attending the bitcoin monday meetup there um and then uh saturday sunday october 5th and 6th i'll be in munich so looking forward to getting together with ps2 i think i'll be passing through innsbruck uh getting together with jonas and then looking forward to spending three days with the team in milan uh there monday through wednesday october 7th so that's uh that's really exciting uh, we're going to have some uh, some really good working sessions and i did have the opportunity to listen to that uh uh, or see, watch the podcast that Rob did with the Desert Links, and I thought it was great, and it was really nice being on Dash News. That's what I got. Thanks. You're just saying that, Rolf? No, it's much better that you do the interviews than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> great. Okay, and now, Rob, for the closing uh, part. All right, so first of all, guys, um, the team has been way too happy today, so I'm getting suspicious. I don't know what's going on. Um, Keep it professional, of course. Um, okay, I'm going to start with a comment that DevMan brought up earlier in the week that I think is really, really good because I've been talking about you know us being decentralized across the board, and one piece of this is uh, comes down to kind of new new coin issuance and back to the discussion about ASICs versus non ASICs versus you know versus GPUs. And, you know, I, I mentioned that we are interested in doing some research into long-term strategies for ASIC resistance, because long-term, you know, th there are many things that that's consistent with, in, in particular, just the aspect of decentralizing new coin issuance, which as we go towards a voting system that is based on, you know, s the stake of Zen that you have, we don't want, you know, uh, certain parties just be able to dominate it. Um, so going towards that value, I think it's very interesting to consider research in the area. Now, DevMan asked me, what's the prioritization of this? And the answer was, we're, we're just in concept development right now, or basically concept exploration. Uh, it's not something that we actually have resourced at the moment. And if we are going to make this sort of commitment in the future, it's a commitment that we would stand by and make sure that you know, if we're going to stand by a commitment, we need to know what we're committing to. So basically, what is the long-term resource um, requirement to doing something like this? And you know, just off the top of my head, we can think of, well, we need a researcher basically dedicated to keeping up and dedicated to pursuing a state of the art because this is a never ending you know, um, you know, cat and mouse race. Uh, and then we need to think about guys who would actually do coding, integrate new algorithms into our code base, those that would do the code review, those that would do the testing and how we integrate this into our, our release cycle. So there's a lot more to it, a lot of nuance and certainly resource commitment. So it's something that I'm interested in and I want to at least flush out the concept and then we can really make a decision of where this sits in the priority queue. Um, okay, so that said, um, also what I've been doing is thinking about a, a post sidechain world, like where do we go as a project uh, once we get sidechains out to the market? And it, there's a whole bunch of supporting work that we need to do leading up to that. Uh, you know, going uh, obviously on the engineering side, but then even going well beyond the engineering side. But uh, one thing that I think is really important for us as a project is to continually improve the quality of our code base and continually improve the, basically our processes to make sure that we're constantly professionalizing how we do business. And what Rowan mentioned earlier and what Rosario mentioned about having uh, security audits and external parties coming in and reviewing our code, absolutely critical. So I'm really excited to kick off that process. Now, it is part of a new process of how we do business. It's not just a one-off event. Uh, we're actually bringing in, we're, we're gonna have multiple phases and just the way that we do business, You know, uh, we'll, we'll have to choose a frequency for where it makes sense. And maybe the frequency is linked to uh, software releases, or maybe the frequency is you know temporarily based. Whatever it ends up being, this will be a new process for us. Um, 
Now, what else do we need to do basically as we go towards the uh, uh, releasing side chains? Well, we have some emerging partnerships with companies and people that want to make use of the side chains. And you know, this is something that, you know, whether it's on the ZBF side, the Zen Blockchain Foundation mm -hmm. side, or some of our partners like Horizon Labs, um, we have entities that are actually already thinking about how to use the tools and forging these partnerships with companies and other other entities, developers mm -hmm. to launch you know launch businesses with these tools or solve business problems with the tools. So we need to formalize this better. And when we go live with the sidechain technology, I would really love to also go live with detail about some of these um, use cases. Um, so basically, going from the abstract to you know, the concrete. Let's see. So. Another, probably the, the last major topic for me uh, today that I want to talk about is governance and community involvement in, in governance. So um, I, governance for a public protocol is absolutely critical to get right, or at least to set in the right direction. And our ideas for governance from the start were, uh, you know, we have this foundation for now, but we want to democratize this. We want to democratize, um, you know, fund flows throughout the ecosystem. We want to democratize how decisions are made. Um, it's a process, and now with sidechains becoming a reality, we actually have a foundation you know, upon which we can realize some of these early goals of the project. But governance goes beyond just voting. Governance goes beyond just resource allocation. So what I want to do is put together a governance task force and welcome in uh, academics, legal scholars, and you know, decentralized governance experts, people who have been putting some deep thought into this area for some time and see what we can you know, come together with collaboratively. Um, some, some more near-term and tangible aspects of governance, um, the Zen Improvement Proposal System that Jonas is working on with Peace2, uh, I think absolutely critical for us. We, we need to be more transparent about the work that we have scheduled and the ideas that we have in our pipeline and just how we take something from an idea to implementation and what is the, the, the thought process and the decision system that goes into that. So the Zen IP. Uh, system, I think, is going to be a, a big and uh, short, you know, basically near-term win for us in that area. Now, as we get the Zenip uh, system live, we need to play by our own rules and basically lead by example. Um, so I'm very excited for that. And Jonas, love the very aggressive target that you have by end of month to get a draft out there. Um, something that I'm very excited to mention, or I've mentioned it before, but um, starting to come to a little bit more of a reality on it, um, Peace Do is launching a community council, and this is an organization whose intention is to capture the common community concerns or sentiments and provide direct insight into the operations of the organization. So basically, an entity that can aggregate up community sentiment and also um, kind of take um, from take the, the uh, processes and things that we're doing, the plans that we have, and distill that back down into the community. So basically a two-way communication channel, one that will be involved in governance. And probably the first uh, low-hanging fruit there is uh, we've invited the community council to be uh, one of the editors on the Zen Ip process. So this is an entity that's independent of the foundation, independent of any corporation that's building in our ecosystem, and something that is really supposed to represent uh, the community at large. So I'm really excited to see how Peace2 forms this. Um, so he's going through basically the formation process himself right now uh, with some other uh, very prolific community members. And I, I'm very interested to see how the council first init initializes, but then maybe even more importantly, um, the processes that they, that they put in place for how they govern themselves and how they, they kind of um, you know, bring new people into their council. So uh, excited for that, and actually a, a big thank you to Peace2 for even thinking about it in the first place. And I love that we're having different elements of our ecosystem kind of emerging um, in you know, leadership positions. And let's see what else. So on the, uh, again, wrapping up the governance conversation is we do have some new um, directors on our, on our board for the foundation. Uh, we need to integrate them into our, our organization, basically integrate them into the, our processes and workflows as well and see where they can contribute. But we need to also put together, um, you know, as we're, we're not done yet adding directors to the foundation, but the, the direction that we've taken is to create an independent board. And the reality here is that, um, you know, Ralph and I were the board previously, and we need not only, um, you know, more 
very seasoned guidance and direction for the organization, but also we need independence, especially as we develop other businesses within the ecosystem like Horizon Labs. And we want to make sure that a particular company, for instance, doesn't have control over the foundation's board. We need to have an independent uh, board. So that, that was the motivation there. We've brought on a, a couple of new directors and we'll be more public in the near future about that and others that we're looking to bring onto the board. Um, so guys, it's all about governance and probably the last piece of governance that I'll mention here. And this was um, you know, coming from the community. Some community members asked the question about financials. Now we don't have audited financials guys, but we are filing our taxes as a nonprofit corporation in the US. And what I'd like to do, and this is something that uh, I wanna talk to our accounting finance um, team in more detail about is I wanna have at minimum quarterly um, aggregated financials released to the community. Um, and by this, I mean, you will see aggregated categories. So bas basically you'll see what we spend money on for engineering products, uh, how much we spend on our marketing budget, how much we do on BD and, and so forth. Uh, you'll see the major categories and how we spend. You won't see the, the detailed accounts of who makes what specifically or what contract um, has what money going into it. You'll get that as we get our voting system in place and everything will be on the blockchain. Um, as of now, we're going to start with the next step forward is going with the quarterly aggregated um, by category financials. Any questions, guys? Uh, Lucy, have we received any questions from Menti? Hey, Rob. Yes, oh, we do. Okay. Um, in the interest of time, I'll just pick the top uh, two. The first one is just keep it up. Cheers. No. Great, great comment. Thank no. you. Along your lines of the team being very happy today. So thank you. Um, <laughs> the next question is, do you have estimates of the extra earnings super nodes will get when the side chain is up and running? No, we don't. That's a great question, though. And uh, the economics for it, uh, for that would be that um, nodes will have the opportunity to run sidechain software um, and they will have the opportunity to earn uh, extra fees by running that software. So we, we don't yet have an idea for what the magnitude of those fees would be. And of course, it's completely proportional to the economic value that's created in our sidechain system. Um, but we know that the value will be greater than zero. We just don't know what the, you know, the, the more upper ends of that would be. Okay, great. Thanks. And then uh, last question. I think it'll be a quick one. Are we still on track for a Q4 sidechain alpha release? We are. Absolutely. Awesome. Great. Uh, well, then in that case, Angie, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Rob and Jonathan. And thank you all guys for being here uh, today again. So hopefully we'll see you in our upcoming uh, weekly insiders. Don't forget to uh, listen to this podcast later and in the YouTube channel as well. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, guys and gals. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank, thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye guys. Bye guys. And gals. Or whatever you phone <laughs> had to use. <laughs>